Welcome to Marriage Mondays with the Kings. I'm Kenya. And I'm Shan. And, and we, we are, are the, the Kings. Kings. Happy Monday to each and every one of you all. We hope and pray that you all had an amazing Monday. You know we're going to jump right into today's show, but we cannot do that without thanking our sponsor and letting you know who that is, which is Christian Humor Force slash Inspiration. This is a group that's designed to uplift, inspire, and bring humor to everyday life in a Christian way. If you are into social media, please check them out simply by going to search them on Facebook at Christian Humor forward slash inspiration. And so as we go farther in the show, uh, we just want to begin like we always do. We'll open up with a word of prayer. Yes. So if you're able to safely, we ask you to please bow your heads, join us in prayer. And if you're with your honey, please uh, grab their hand as we go before the Lord. Yes. So Father God, once again, we just come to you today giving you glory on and praise. Yes. Father God, we just thank you for another time such as this that thank you've you given Lord. us to be before your people on the day there, God. Yes. Father God, on the day we're just come pleading the blood of Jesus. Jesus on the day, dear God, over this land, Heavenly yes. Father. We're asking that you would open up our eyes, dear God, that we'll be able to see things not only in the natural, dear God, but we're able to see things in the spiritual way, yes. Heavenly Father. Yes. Father God, we're asking on the day that we be able to submit to your will and to your way and your authority, dear God, and not to the authority of man. Father God, we know that we have laws and things we must abide by, Heavenly Father, but even sometimes those laws are not in line with your laws, yes. dear God. So we just ask that you would help us to be able to see these things, Heavenly Father. We you would give us that discernment, Heavenly Father, that we choose the right things to do, the right things to say, Heavenly Father, and all the while continuing to do your will and spreading your word. Yes. Father God, we ask you to come in to our hearts and teach us to love more. Teach yes. us to block out hate, Heavenly Father. Let us not come uh, into fruition with spiritual division, yes. uh, dear God. We ask you would just step into our hearts and help us to come together as a community, as a nation, Heavenly Father, of people that we don't see color, Heavenly Father, uh, as the basis of how to judge an individual, but just colors is something that brings us closer together. Yes. Father God, we ask you to just give us strength on the day. We ask you to restore our faith, to pour out uh, forgiveness in our hearts, Heavenly Father, for those that may offend us. Yes. Father God, we're asking on the day that your word and your power be manifested like it's never been manifested before. Yes. We know that your word would not return to you void on the day, dear God. And so we ask that you would step in and do it seedily and abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Yes. Father God, we ask that you would help each man and examine his own heart yes. and, and deal with himself first, that we get the sticks and the stones and the timber trees out of our eyes yes. before we judge something yes. that's in someone else's eyes. And Father God, we just ask that you would just give us those eyes to uh, be able to see things, to keep us from being distracted, dear God, to get us off of that path that you would have yes. us on, but you would leave us in this path that is straight, that is righteous towards your will and your way. Yes. Father God, let us not fall for the tricks of the enemy. We know that there are a lot of things going on in the world today, dear God, that the enemy has put out before us, that even man has put out before us that would trick us into turning away from you, that would trick us into doing things that are harmful to ourselves and even our children, even our fellow man on the day, dear God. But we let your word be true. We let your word be a guide and light on the day, dear God. And we ask that you would just lead us into the path of righteousness. On the day, dear God, we're asking once again that you would just step in like no, like never before, dear God, that you would just let your word reign supreme. And Father God, and we know that somewhere there is a need that needs to be met. Yes. Father God, we ask that you would meet that need regardless of what it is, that you would pour out your spirit upon your people, that you would pour out blessings that we won't have room to receive, and that overflow, Heavenly Father, will run from those that need it even down to those that may not need it, Heavenly Father, but we all need you to keep surviving. So, Father God, we just thank you on the day. We thank you for you giving us this opportunity to be before your people, and we pray that the word goes forth and it falls on good ground and good fruit comes from the yes. seed that is planted. So, we yes. just thank you on the day. Thank we you. give you all glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, Jesus. amen. Amen, amen. And so our KRGN disclaimer is this. Views expressed on this show are those of the host, guests, and callers and are not necessarily those of KRGN 98.5 FM, its management of the advertisers. KRGN 98.5 FM holds no responsibility for the validity or accuracy of information on this show. And our Marriage Mondays with the Kings disclaimer 
Please keep in mind that although we are counseling professionals, the information shared on our radio show is for ministry and educational purposes only. Also note that topics discussed are reflective of the supporters who continue to contact us desiring to have a deeper knowledge of these topics. No information is shared on our show based upon our counseling experiences. Topics are for the encouragement of marriages, families, and communities as God desires for us to minister. Yes, and so our motto here for Marriage Monies with the Kings is helping to build strong Stronger marriages, which lead to stronger families and stronger communities. And our foundational scripture for the show, Matthew, the 19th chapter in the 6th verse. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, yes. what God has joined together, let no one separate. Amen. Amen. And so moving further down in our announcements, uh, we have... Uh, Uh, A short period of time here to really thank those individuals that support Marriage Mondays with the Kings. And so we want to start out in Houston, Texas, and send a big shout out to Destiny Hawkins. So Destiny Hawkins in Houston, Texas, thank you so much for being a supporter. Thank you. Also to Calvin Young Lalu of Miami, Florida. So Calvin, thank you for supporting us as well. And then to Damani Sumalia of Kamasa, Ghana. Yes. Hope I said that right. Kamasa, <laughs> Ghana. Uh, thank you so much for being a supporter. But not only do we want to thank those three individuals to any and everyone who supports Marriage Mondays with the Kings and KRGM, we just thank you. We thank ask for your you. continued support. And we ask that you keep us covered in prayer as we continue to keep you covered in prayer as well. Amen. And Amen. so moving on to some anniversaries that were celebrated. Uh, if you're a new listener, uh, please know that we love to celebrate anniversaries. And so we want to start off in Colleen, Texas. Uh, saying happy anniversary to Carl and Janie Davis. Yes. Celebrated 12 years on the 21st of June. All right. 12 years. And so to Musa and Sally Fur of Dayton, Ohio, they celebrated seven years on the 22nd. Come so happy now. anniversary. Yes. And then to Kendrick and Ebony Keys of Colleen, Texas, celebrated 20 years wow. on the 21st. Fourth, mm, 20 mm-hmm. years. And then to some really good friends of ours, to Brian and Sherry and Lighty of Clean Texas, 33 years on, on the 27th yes, of June. 33 yes. years. And so once again, we just want to be able to say happy anniversary to all those couples. If you weren't able to get your information into us, uh, we just want to say happy anniversary to you as yes. well. We pray that God continues to bless you and your union with many uh, more uh, years to come. But not only that, we're going to ask these individuals, uh, you know, it doesn't matter if you've been uh, married a year, two years, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and we can go on up. Mm-hmm. If your marriage is working well and come you've on. got some things that is working well for you, don't be afraid to plant a seed. Yes. There's no way that we're going to be able to reach back to the uh, other generations coming behind us to show them what marriage is supposed to look like. If we're not trying to keep ourselves straight, they have to have a guide, if you will, uh, to go off of. So it starts in the home. Parents, we need to be reaching down to our children, teaching and telling them about marriage, guiding them so that way when they make that decision, they know that they're making the right decision before God because this isn't something that's on paper. This is something that's in Scripture. Amen. Amen. And so just go ahead and, you know, our announcements. This is what we're going to ask here on Marriage Mondays with the Kings. We know that there is a lot of things that are going on in the world right now. And, you know, some people's hearts may feel heavy. And so what we like to do right here at KRG and 98.5 FM is we, this is an inspirational radio station. And what that means is we hope and pray that anything that is said from any of the radio personalities or hosts, that it inspires you. And so if it inspires you, we ask that you would just share with someone else because we never know what people are going through. Share with them about KRGN. And so there are so many ways that people can listen in. You can listen online. Maybe you work in the they allow you to listen to radio or whatever the case may be at www.mykrgn.com. If you are into apps, you can listen via the app. And so all you have to do is search KRGN space FM. And so we just want to let you know that KRGN is located right in the heart of Central Texas, Harker Heights, Texas. And so if this has been a blessing to you, anything that you have heard, please share with someone else because this is the time in our lives where we all can be inspired by what God gives us here at KRGN to sow back into his people. And so moving on, we would just like to show love of those who are bigger 
parts of KRGN 98.5 FM. And so that is our spiritual overseers. We like to show love to the radio show owners and managers, all the radio personalities, volunteers, and those who sow financially into KRGN, as well as keeping KRGN in your prayers. And so, like I said, again, remember KRGN does have an app that can be downloaded. So that way you can listen to gospel and jazz 24 hours a day. Now, for those of you who missed our show on last week, because we have been in the vein this month of families and we have been going deeper and deeper and deeper. And so last week we spoke about parents who are divided. So parents divided. And if you happen to miss last week's show, listen here, Marriage Mondays with the Kings is on buzzsprout.com. We are on Apple Podcasts. We are on Google Play, iHeartRadio. You can listen via our YouTube channel, which is Marriage Mondays with the Kings, radio personality. You can get caught up any of the topics of anything Thing that you may be going through in your personal life as an individual, your family may be struggling with something, or even your marriage, trust and believe, all you have to do is search one of our platforms and nine times out of 10, I promise you that it may be available because there are people who are listening to our shows from 2017, from 2017 and on certain topics and they're asking for more. So if you missed it, you can feel free to check us out at any of those avenues or platforms. And so as we move on in today's show, we want to definitely tell you about today's topic. And today's topic is entitled The Root of Children Acting Out. Mm. Once again, today's topic is The Root of Children Acting Out. And so the question of the week is this. Why are parents so quick to blame the child for acting out versus recognizing that they may be the root of the problem? Uh Uh-oh. Yeah, we're going to get into it on today. We're going to get into it on today. So if y'all ready, buckle your seatbelts and let's go. All right. So getting off into today's show, um, you know, just want to really focus on, you know, children acting out and and what may be the root of of that problem. Mm -hmm. Uh, The first thing I want to do, and I do it a lot um, with our uh, show here, is, you know, definitions are important to help you really be able to get a visual and understand and be able to tie everything in that we're able to see. That's true. Uh, So when I looked up the word root, a lot of us know this first one is the part of the plant which attaches into the ground or to support typically underground conveying water and nourishment to the rest of the plant via its numerous branches and fibers. Mm. It's also the basic cause, the source, or the origin of something. Mm -hmm. And then from a mathematical standpoint, it can be a number or a quantity that when multiplied by itself, typically a specified number of times, it gives a specified number or a specified quantity. Mm. And so when we think about this uh, issue that we're talking about now, Uh, with children and what could be the root of their problems, I want to take this all the way back to that first definition that I gave you. Okay. And it's the part of the plant which attaches itself to the ground or to a support. Mm. Understand, parents, that when you're talking about your children, their grounding, their support is the parent. Yes. So if you are um, the support, you're the initial root, you're the initial foundation the children are getting their nourishment from you. Mm-hmm. It That's says true. it gets water nourishment to the rest of the plant. There are a branch off of you. So if you're not rooted and you've been acting out and doing things of that nature, what are you feeding into your come children? On, come on, come on. And so the second one that we talked about was the basic cause, the source or origin of something. Mm-hmm. You know, all too often when we see that children are starting to act out, we want to just go in on the child. Yes. We never want to backtrack to say, hey, where did this start from? What caused that? Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes what we do, we end up doing more damage because we start trying to go straight to the child and blaming them instead of getting at the root. That's true. And so if you've ever did any type of yard work, if you've ever worked in a field, planted some things, you know that when we start getting in the garden, you can't just pull the top of the heads off Mm -hmm. right there at the ground. You Mm got to get off in the ground and pull the whole root out to keep the weed from growing and overtaking 
um, the fruit or the plants that you're trying to grow. Mm -hmm. We need to do our children the exact same way. And I'm not saying you pluck them out the ground. What I'm saying is you get to the root cause. You do some digging. You go back to where some stuff originally started at and deal with it from that standpoint. Because if you don't, the weeds continue to spread and it overtakes the garden. When Mm -hmm. the garden is overtaken, the the, the, uh, fruit that's planted, it can't produce fruit. The Mm -hmm. plant that's planted can't give out fruit. Mm -hmm. And we want our children to be able to carry on and produce fruit. That's true. That is so true. And so, of course, you know, what does this look like when a child is acting out? That's that's the question that I ask myself. And so keep in mind, the first thing that I'm going to bring up is this, and I may be tapping on some of my husband's notes, but when a child has no discipline. Mm, that was good. That's the first one on list. That's the first one on your list. Yep. That's the first one. That's not the first not one to say my... that's the most important, but that's what jumped in my mind yes. right off the bat. When a child has no discipline. Now, this is one of the things that I've been seeing, and I'm not going to say it's right. I'm not going to say it's wrong. But some of the newer age, I guess you could say parents, I understand even myself and Kenya. Now, look, we're not perfect. I'm going to say that right now. We've had some, I guess you could say, trial and error with our children. So there are some things that we brought from generations past that we actually sow into our children. In other words, what I'm saying is the things in our upbringing, there are a lot of things that we were on one accord. And so last week we were talking about the parents divided. When you're divided, the child has no covering and the enemy can come in and just come straight for that child because the parents are not on one accord, just like some of our marriages, but I digress. Anywho, so when you have no discipline, when the child has no discipline, discipline, then of course they're going to act out because think about it like this. And this is what I was thinking about. So our children in our home and we are parents of five. Okay. We still have three children in the home. Two of our children are grown and married, right? So the thing is this, our children in the home, when they have no discipline, so if they do something that you told them not to do, and you may say as a parent, because I know some of us is guilty because, baby, we tired, especially after work. You'll say, you know what? I'm going to get you for that because you know that you had no business doing that. You know, blah, 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 blah. And then you don't follow through with what you said. What that's trans uh, computing to the child is this. It translates to the child is this. Okay, they don't keep their word, so I could do whatever I want to do, and they're not going to do anything about it anyway. And so you fall into a pattern as a parent to where you don't follow through with what you said. Now, this is one thing that I know to be a fact. When our children grow up and they go out into the world, you best believe if they do something that they have no business doing, the world is going to discipline them. Mm, That's good. So think about it like that. The world is going to discipline them. So the children need to learn that if they do something that we as parents tell them not to do, that there needs to be some type of uh, discipline. Now, some people say, well, I don't whoop my kids. And I've heard so many things, you know, the slaves used to get beat. So I don't beat my kids. Now, look, we didn't necessarily beat our children either. And I would have to say our children, you usually have one, but I, I have to say, I think almost all of our children have what they consider old souls. They're wise beyond their years. So a lot of things we can sit up and we can talk to our children about. We don't necessarily have to always beat them. And I must say, because the children know the standard of our home and that's where children act out because there is no standard in the home. They don't know what it look like. So if they know that mama and daddy is going to get at them or they're going to get some type of punishment, if they do something that they have no business doing in the home, they know that the world is not going to treat them any different. Now, glory be to God when it comes to the king's kids. Now, I'm going to say it just like this. My country is about to display itself. Not now one of our children, thanks and glory be to God, had to ever end up in police custody, any of that type of court stuff or any of that kind of, none of our children because they know better because they know that mama and daddy is going to get that behind in the house. There is some form of discipline. So if we tell you not to do something, we mean what we say. Mm -hmm. So that's something, the first thing that jumped out. So what you got, babe? Well, you know, the thing that hit uh, me and you were already uh, knocking on it earlier, Mm -hmm. Um, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Come on now. So a lot of times children act out because the parents are the ones that are acting out. That's true. You know, you you have a 
husband that wants something, he doesn't get his way, so he starts doing any and everything. And then when the child wants something and doesn't get their way, they do the same thing, and mm-hmm. you wonder where they get that from. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and along with that, it, it comes uh, down to sometimes children, uh, they pick up other bad habits from other children. That's true. You know, they, they play with children, or, you know, you got teenagers that hang with each other in, in, in school. Mm-hmm. And sometimes they'll pick up bad habits or other things from other children. Yeah. And I think recognizing uh, these things and having a conversation with your children about that uh, helps them to be able to decipher uh What is going to be socially accepted as they get older so that way they know how to navigate their emotions Mm -hmm. and their reactions as they move forward into adulthood, as they go through their lifespan uh, as a a human being. Mm -hmm. Uh, The other thing that I I want to pay uh, a little bit of attention to, you know, we're talking about, you know, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Um, What underlying issues may have been going on in the family that maybe the family is ignoring. Come on. Is there some mental health issues that may have been going on there? Was there some type of sexual trauma or Mm -hmm. uh, sexual molestation that was going on uh, with individuals? It's been passed down from generation to generation. Are they being bullied? Right. Are they being bullied? Mm -hmm. It's a lot of different things that can be going on as to why a child uh, may be acting out. But parents, you know, we have to be able to Stop for a minute. Yeah. In the world that we live in, we know that everyone is running 100 miles a minute. Where, you know, before in the past, one person may have been able to go to work and someone stayed home and took care of the kids, this, that, and other. Now it's sometimes two people both working. Mm-hmm. And sometimes the kids taking care of themselves because we're trying to make ends meet. Mm-hmm. But sometimes we have to slow that horse down, get off of it for a minute, and just pull our kids close to us so that some things don't occur. We, we know sometimes when kids start acting out, they're hanging out with other children for whatever reason, mm-hmm. and they will go to those other individuals to get guidance on what they may consider wisdom and knowledge instead of getting it from the parents. That's true. They'll go to the individuals. Listen to what I'm saying. They will go to an individual that will listen. Mm-hmm. If a dog keeps coming to you and he's trying to tell you he's hungry, he will go to the first person that has a snack for come him. Come on, come on. That is true. And that's what I was sitting up thinking about too. Because when I was thinking about children acting out, children, like my husband was just saying, they they need attention. Mm-hmm. They need love. So that was my thing. My next thing that was on my list is like when you are not spending time with your child as you should. And see, I'm just going to be honest like I always am. What tends to happen that I see is you have a lot of parents that are buying the children, mm-hmm. quote unquote, instead yeah. of spending time with them. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. Our children already know this is this is a rule in a king household. If and not when they do good in school. For example, we reward our children. They have like a, 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 what would you say, baby? Like a letter where we give them so Mm -hmm. much money per grade. Mm -hmm. You know, they have a standard in our house that if you meet this and this standard, then you will get a reward. We spend time with our children. My husband had them boys out in their yard. We get together as a family. We pluck in the weeds out the flower beds. We speak to them. We talk to them. We love on them. Because guess what? What I notice as parents, when you really want to start spending time with your children is after you've seen them walk across that stage. Mm. But you had 18 whole years where you could really sow into your children children and everything else was important in your life and then you will buy the children Mm -hmm. so then we sit up and wonder why it is when the children get older why they're always wanting things because the love that we should have been sowing into our children and spending time with them and listening to them and hear them we replace that with material possessions so again that translate to the child that love equals material possessions so that's why when they go and they get married and they get into their relationship Relationships, then that's what they expect from the person that they're dating or that they go into and they marry. If you love me, you would buy things for me because that's what the parents have sown. That's the seed that you sown into your child. Mm. So ask yourself, what seeds are you sowing into your children? You you sit up and say, oh, they ain't nothing but ungrateful, spoiled brats. Hello, who spoiled them? Yeah. We got to put the we got to put the blame where it belongs. You can't blame the child for what it is that you sold into them. Mama and daddy, it is our responsibility. The word of God says train up a child in the way that they should go. So when they get old, they will not depart from it. So when they are getting older, if they're money hungry, um, because that's what they feel, or materialistic, because that's what they feel equates to love. 
who sowed that seed? That's good. Hmm. That's good. And, you know, yeah, y'all know me and my wife are on the same sheet of music. Uh, that was on my <laughs> list as well. And, you know, just to add to that uh, about attention uh, seeking, uh, there's a reason a child wants that attention. Mm. And like I said before, if you don't give it to them, they will find somebody who, who will. They sure will. Uh, I think what we really have to, to sit down and take a look at is, you know, are we teaching our children, like my wife was saying, to look for love in, in different things? Mm. You know, when, when a child uh, doesn't get love from their parents and you think you can just give them that PlayStation, see, eventually they may grow out of that PlayStation because mm-hmm. the love that they really need, that PlayStation isn't giving it to them. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you're, you're trying to give them everything uh, in, the, in the place of love. And so they try to find love in video games. They try to find love in smoking. They try to find love in yes. alcohol. Then they try to find love in sex. And mm-hmm. they're experimenting and doing all this stuff, trying to find something that they should have been able to get from that parent Come on. from the get-go. Mm-hmm. And That's so true. with that, we, we know that, you know, kids seek attention for a lot of different reasons. And I will just tell parents this. Um, be patient. Listen to your children. Mm-hmm. Listen to what I'm saying. A baby doesn't cry for no reason. Come on. Either that diaper needs to be changed, they're hurting, they've got pain, um, they need some food, Mm -hmm. they're teething. Mm -hmm. When you hear your child in pain, when they're crying out, you have to be willing to go and find out what that pain is and then try to soothe that pain, whatever it is that they're going through. Mm -hmm. This is a second thing that I want to add to that. Understand. We're, we're parents. We want to do as best as we can with our children, but we don't know it all. Yes. Don't be afraid to go to an outside source, if need be, to help you with that situation. And we're going to talk a little bit about that uh, a little later on as well. That is true. And so even being in the same vein of what you were just speaking about, I had made mention about this, I want to say maybe on last week's show, but it still lines up with this show. And I, you know, I can't take credit for it. Me and my husband are not going to take credit for it. But the question that I have And we were just speaking about this yesterday uh, with uh, a circle of individuals had this conversation. So I'm going to ask this question to you parents. Does your child have a voice? Mm. When they are in your home, does your child have a voice? And so if you were to say, well, you know, what do you mean by that? Again, I'm going to give this example. It's not even so much an example um, with me listening to Prison Break with Shonda and Shirley, which is the show that comes on right before our show here mm-hmm. on KRGN. I was listening to the show, one of the shows that they had, and they had Mr. Roderick Jones. He um, resides in Colleen, Texas, and they were speaking to the fathers. It was kind of to honor fathers for Father's Day. And so When they were asking the fathers, the two fathers that they had on the show, what do you think about what's going on in today's world, you know, with the with the riots and all that kind of stuff like that? Why do you think that, you know, it may be children or whomever that is acting out like this? And one of the things that Roderick said, Mr. Jones said was he said a lot of the times children do not have a voice. And so if you all who are our age, we're in our 40s. When we were growing up, yes, our parents did what they thought was best at that time. But one of the common things that you heard, especially in, I guess you could say the black household or whatever, um, number one, you are to be seen and not heard. That was one of the things. And and so, of course, you had to stay in a child's place. You couldn't be sassing, which is which means talking back. It's translated to talking back. And, of course, we don't promote that in our family either. But the question is, where was it ever taught that your child can have a voice. And so what Mr. Jones said is you have to think about it or prime example. This is a prime example in which we were talking about last night when, when males are told not to cry, because that's something that's very common in many households. You are not to cry. You're going to be a man or whatever. And so males are taught to stuff that down on the inside. And so when things such as what's going on in the world in the past couple of months take place, then guess what? Children are going to explode because of what should have been taking place in the home. So is your child allowed to express to you as a parent how they are feeling, what they are going through? Because this is one thing that we know all too well, and I'm not trying to be dramatic in what I'm saying. My husband walks this every day, and he's been walking this. When did you start uh, with suicide prevention? 
2013. 2000. So we're talking about coming up on what seven years. Mm -hmm. So for seven years, and and to to from what I know, you know, just in conversation, because that's you know his program. But from what I know, is you have a lot of young people who are committing suicide. They don't know which way to turn because they don't have a voice in their home because their parents are too busy doing all the things that they feel that they need to be doing, but you are not having a relationship and communicating with your child. So that's what I want parents to ask Ask yourself, each one of your children, do they have a voice and can your child come to you and have a conversation with you about how they feel of what's going on in their life, what's going on in their home without you having an attitude and trying to snap back at your child and say that they should be grateful and blah, blah, blah. Listen to them. They need a voice in the home because if they can develop, according to Mr. Jones, a voice in the home, then when they go out in the world, they know how to properly express themselves. Mm, that's good. That's good. And uh, another thing I wanted to capitalize on uh, as well, mm -hmm. um, you know, sometimes children are acting out because of stress, yes. because of pressure that's being put on them from un reasonable or unrealistic expectations, whether it comes from parents, whether it comes from friends, whether it comes from individuals in society, uh, they're trying to get the good grade to get in the, um, a good college, mm -hmm. or, you know, a trade school. There's just so much pressure that's put on them. And maybe because they don't have that voice, they haven't learned how to deal with their emotions uh, in the past mm -hmm. that, that they start to act out. Mm -hmm. And so what I would advise individuals to do parents is once again, have that conversation with your children. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I'm reminded of a young man who um, attempted suicide. Mm -hmm. uh, and this was years, years, years ago. Um, he was trying to get into a particular Ivy League school. He didn't get into that school, but he got into another one. Mm -hmm. And because he wasn't able to get into the school that his parents wanted him to get into, he took all that up on himself and just figured out, well, I'm a failure, and he tried to take his life. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he did not complete suicide. However, you know, that teaches us something. You know, so all too often children are trying to do what – um their live parents their want parents them to do live up to their expectations mm -hmm. or the parents are living through their children. Come on, come you know, on. Uh, I was really good at football. Yeah. I didn't get no state championship and go to play college, but that's what you're going to do, yes. you know, and that may not be the, the case for, th for that. That may not be what God had for that child. That's it. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, with that, we, we have to understand that we have to kind of teach our children how to deal with stress, how to deal with pressure, mm -hmm. how to set realistic, attainable, measurable goals. Yes. Uh, so, and if they don't make a goal, to explain to them it's okay everyone doesn't make it on the first try the second or even at all mm -hmm. uh, if you've heard me on the story on the show before I told you about the um, product WD-40 mm -hmm. the reason why it's called WD-40 is because he tried 39 times developing that product and failed mm -hmm. but that 40th time was when it was accepted when mm -hmm. it worked out for him mm -hmm. And so sometimes we have to tell our children, sometimes we have to fall down to get back up. Yes. Sometimes we have to fail in order to succeed. That's how you learn. That, that's how you learn. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just a part of that social growth uh, that occurs. But parents, we are the ones that should be instilling that in our children. That's true. Uh, another thing that I wanted to talk about just for a moment as well, um, I kind of hit on it before, but, you know, unaware and untreated mental health issues. Oh, my God. Uh, you yes. know, sometimes parents, it's hard for us to understand that, you know, someone's saying something is wrong with your child. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We don't want to believe that. We mm -hmm. want to say, no, they just need a belt. Mm -hmm. uh, no, they just need somebody to a uh, good talking to. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they need some counseling. Sometimes they may need some therapy. Yes. Uh, sometimes it's just a, an issue that you can't deal with them. Somebody else has to be able to do it because one of the things that you're doing is making it worse by bashing them in. That's true. Yeah, that's true. So we have to understand if there is uh, an untreated uh, mental health issue, uh, try to get to a point where that child can get treated. Now, we understand a lot of people are going through a lot of different situations just in life general. Mm -hmm. We know sometimes it costs a lot. You may not have insurance. Check your resources in your local area. Sometimes there are a lot of places that will do uh, reduced counseling sessions or even free counseling sessions. Your, your counseling session may be based off your income that can help you get that uh, adequate care that you may need for that child or even for yourself. Mm -hmm. That's true. And then if it's uh, if you're um, unaware of a mental health 
uh, issue that may be there. Uh, don't be afraid to do some homework, do some resources, get to a doctor, uh, get a referral done, and you know, get to a professional that may be able to help you understand that and educate yourself in that as well. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm just gonna, you know, say this last part, then I'm gonna pass it off to my wife. Even in doing that, educate yourself, get second and third opinions about things of that nature. Because I know when I was coming uh, up in high school and, you know, um, graduated and came into the military, there were so many parents that every time their child acted out that the first thing that they wanted to throw at them was ADHD. That's true. Yeah. You know, put them on, on Ritalin and pills and all the things of that nature. And I literally saw uh, kids in school uh, that just looked like they were just barely making it sometimes. Mm-hmm. I've seen kids in schools now that I go to at times, and it just seems like they're just dragging through the day because they're on medication. They will come to me and say, uh, you know, yeah, I, I've been on this for so long, and it's just got me down in the dumps. Uh, educate yourself on that. Have those concerns and those talks with your doctors, your psychiatrists, and things of that nature to make sure that the child is getting the best possible health care that they can. We yeah. all want our children to succeed, but we have to take a bigger role as mm-hmm. parents into uh, the things that we're doing, especially when it comes to our children and their mental health. And then the last thing I'll say in reference to that mental health, um, be aware of what you're speaking into your child's life, yes. the things that you were telling them. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're not going to be any better or have any good growth if you keep telling them that they ain't going to never be nothing. That's true. If That's you keep true. telling them, well, you're going to be just like your father. You're going to be just like your mama. Mm-hmm. Uh, you'll be pregnant by the time you get out of this, out of high school. And then when it happens, who's to blame for it? That's true. The child may have completed the act, but you planted the seed. Come on. Come on. That's true. Wow. So we need to learn how to speak life into our children. And sometimes, I'm, I'm just going to say it, sometimes it goes even further than just our children. Mm-hmm. We know our children have friends and they come over and visit and things of that nature. You may need to plant a kind word, a kind seed into someone else's child because they may not be getting it at home. That's true. So if we've already talked about attention seeking and they may go to someone else. Mm-hmm. Why not let it be someone that can speak the word of God over them, that can pray for them, that can discern for them, who can stand in the gap for them when they may not be able to do it for themselves, when their parents may not be able to do it as well. Mm -hmm. And I remember a time back in the day when the community came together. I don't care whose child you were. Everybody said something to you. Everybody prayed for you. Mm -hmm. Some of everybody may have put a belt on you. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, we know that times have changed, but I think we need to get back to that point as a community where we're looking out for one another. And I'm just going to go out there and say it. With everything that's going on in the world today, it it, it doesn't matter if you're black, white, yellow, green, red, turquoise, or whatever. Mm -hmm. We all bleed red on the inside. Mm -hmm. We should all be uh, asking to be covered in the blood of Jesus. Yes. And we should be looking out for one another as a society because that's the only way society is going to be better is if we help each other out. That's true, yeah. And in the last few shows that we've talked about, we talked about division amongst parents. If there's a divide in parents that manifests itself into the world because at that point now we have all these other things starting to divide. Mm -hmm. If parents Mm -hmm. get on the same sheet and say, hey, uh, I'm not going to say there is no color because we can all see color and color is there. But what we have to say, we're not going to judge anybody by that color. Mm -hmm. If parents get on that that same sheet of music and we teach that at an early age, then maybe it doesn't manifest itself into hate and the things that we see nowadays uh, around the world to where we're divided as a community, we're divided as a nation, and we shouldn't be that way. Mm-hmm. That's true. That is true. And so that the thing that I was sitting up thinking about, um, of course, with today's topic, uh, the reason why children act out. I wrote down, children may be acting out because of the negative atmosphere in their home. Mm, that's good. What are the parents doing? Now, for you all who have been listening to Marriage Mondays with the Kings, we are, as of uh, October, November, we'll be going into our fourth year of this show. So you know that we've put it all out there um, in regards to our marriage and different things like that. The atmosphere in your home is very important. And that's one of the things that we've learned in our almost 22 years of marriage What me and my husband display in our home as husband and wives is very important because that's what our children are going to see as a foundation 
for their future marriages. And so if the atmosphere in your home is not conducive to a positive environment for the child, if they always hearing fussing and cussing, if they're always seeing fighting, that is what they think is supposed to happen. That is the seed that you mom and dad is planting in their little minds as they continue to grow up. It sickens me. Let me just say it just like that because y'all know I keep it real. It sickens me when parents say that children are, uh, what do they say? Children are, um, uh, Kind of like, oh, basically they'll get over it. But oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, oh, they'll get yeah, over right. it. They'll They're just it. children, mm -hmm. you know, and kind of stuff like that. Who says that? That's what I'm going to say. No, you are the parent. When you decide to lay down and do the horizontal tango and you got pregnant or you got somebody pregnant or whatever the case may be, guess what? God placed a great responsibility on you for the children that you raise. And that's the thing that gets me is parents, you want to blame the children. Come on now, I got started. You want to blame the children for how they act out, but you never, like my husband said, want to, wait a minute, what's the root cause? this why are these children acting out because nine times out of ten the finger will be pointed back at you mm -hmm. it's something that you didn't do right as a parent and we're just gonna keep it real it's some things that me and my husband had to swallow i say this i said this in another forum when i was speaking the older children always remember the foolishness huh in the family. They always remember the foolishness in the, the marriage of their parents. And so I remember having a conversation with our oldest son and I apologized to him because we were talking about, because he said, mama, it seemed like you and daddy are in a real good space. And this was back in 2014. 15, mm -hmm. I want to say about five years ago, it seemed like you and daddy are in a real good space. And, you know, he was talking about how he heard uh, me and my husband, we was in a real heated argument some years before that he was upstairs and he heard it. And that particular argument, it got really heated. It got really heated. You know, we keep it real. We're transparent on our show. And he said, mama, I was upstairs praying no, no, no. While me and my husband was in the midst of arguing and acting a whole fool on the first floor of our home, our oldest son was upstairs praying against the things that were coming out of our mouth. Come on, somebody. What set, What foundation do you set in your children? Do they know how to pray besides blessing their food? Do they know how to go before God? Do they know how to read their word? Listen to what I said. Our son, who was a teenager, was praying against the very things that me and my husband were arguing about. So the environment in the home can be very toxic. But glory be to God that our oldest son was praying as a teenager. He was covering his parents in prayer in the midst of an argument. Come on, somebody. We don't want to sit up here and take the responsibility of the things that we create in our home. Why? Because it doesn't feel good. So I'm going to take one of my husband's you know, things that he's famous for on Marriage Mondays with the Kings. People say, I love your husband's analogies. They say this all the time. I love his analogies. So so let's go back to when you your children were younger. And my husband kind of mentioned this a few minutes ago. And they sitting in that diaper. And that diaper stinking like none other. Y'all know y'all had some, some, some diapers that y'all had to change from your children that was just horrid. It took your breath away. You like, dang, you too little to be smelling like this. And so the child is screaming at the top of their lung because they're trying to communicate to their parents, get this off of me. And see, this is the thing. It's so quick for us as parents to blame the child for the way that they are acting because we don't like to sit in that dirty diaper. Mm. It doesn't feel good to sit in that dirty diaper to have some on our behind. It doesn't smell good to sit in that dirty diaper. We do not like to sit in the mess that we created. Mm -hmm. That's basically what it is. And so if you look at the world today, especially when you are on social media, and I'm showing this as a good example, Everybody that is arguing that calls themselves adults on social media, you're arguing and you point the finger about the statues and all this other, the flag and all this other kind of crazy stuff that's going on. You're pointing the finger at everybody else, but you got to ask yourself, what part did I play in this, mm -hmm. in this division? What part am I playing in making this world to where it's not better for my, my brother and sister? That's you it. see what I'm saying? And so we do the same thing. Oh, the kids will be all right. No, parents, you got to do better. Learn how to sit in your mess and process your mess because this is what we do as therapists, right, baby? Mm -hmm. We allow our clients to sit. We, 
We put something out there that may sting and just be quiet because we allow them to sit in their mess. So what we need to do as parents, instead of projecting and blaming on the child because it's things that we should have did as a parent and have foundation, we need to learn how to process and sit in our mess. Number one, what is the root cause of this? Mm-hmm. Number two, what role did I play in it? Mm-hmm. See, that's the part that we skip. We we may ask what the root cause is, but then we jump straight to blaming somebody else for it. Well, if my mom and them wouldn't have did this to there me. There we go. Come on. If my mom and them wouldn't have did this, then maybe my child wouldn't have been acting like that. Hello? Hello? You missed the key part. Where are you in that? I'm just saying. I'm asking the questions. Yeah, and I think that's something we all have to keep in mind because, you know, in cases like that, somebody has to break the cycle. Come on. You know, if you keep, you know, running in a circle and you're getting dizzy, the only thing you got to do is stop and get out the circle. Come on. My but God. sometimes we we don't do that and we do kind of lay it back on, well, you know, my parents did this to me and I came out okay. Yeah. You know, your children may not be at that same uh, mental capacity. They may not have that same resiliency that you may have had during that time frame. And, you know, the outcome can be totally different. Yes. And so with that, you know, sometimes children act out uh, just through rebellion. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. they know some things are wrong in the house. They they may, you know, not want to do something and they're just acting out just to get that attention at that point. And that could be a way of them uh, voicing themselves as well. That's true. And then we also know sometimes children act out because they want to manipulate and control. Mm-hmm. But, but where did they learn it from? Yeah, that's Ooh. it. Where they learned that from. Come on. Come and, and, on. And, you know, we're not going to sit here and beat the parents up. Kids learn things from other kids as well. That's true. They watch TV. They're on the Internet. Uh, mm-hmm. But once again, you know, that kind of comes back on the parents because, you know, you have to be able to try to monitor some of those things at times. Yes. And like me and my wife said, we didn't always get it right. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, as you learn, you grow. Yes. And when you grow better, then you do better. Come when on. you know better, you do better. And so I remember a while back we were doing something. I looked this up on the Internet and there was this little a, a little saying that it said, broken children become broken adults. Yes. Didn't we? We had a show on that. We had a yes, show on that. Yes. And, and the thing about it is that we have to understand that when a person sits up and says, well, you know, my father and my mother did this to me, mm-hmm. you know, that, that just proves it right there. They did something that particularly broke you or didn't make you feel good, but then you'll turn around and do that same thing to your children knowing how you felt. Now you're going to project that same hurt, anger, or whatever feeling and emotion that they may have on them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we have to be willing, parents, to stand up and realize that there are some things that you know we do that may cause some of the reasons why these these children are acting out. Then, you know, we just have to put it out there. Sometimes we just have some bad kids. Yeah. Sometimes. You know, we, we we just hate to say that a child is bad, but sometimes they, they do bad things. Mm-hmm. They make bad decisions. Uh, and, uh, you know, a part of that is learning from that. And like my wife was saying early on, a lot of times it has to be a consequence that is met with that. It has to be some type of discipline or it has to be some type of teachable moment that we can show those children so that they can learn from that and then they can move on. Mm-hmm. Listen to what I said. They can learn from that and then they can move on. Yeah. You know, um, God forbid if a teenage uh, young lady comes home pregnant. Mm-hmm. Yes, you may not like it. Mm-hmm. May not be anything you can do about it at that point. Teach to her the things that she needs to be taught. Maybe she doesn't go forth and, and you know, make that same um, decision again. Mm-hmm. But if you just beat them down and call them everything but a child of God, they may go right back to the place where they felt good at the first time, and now they got another child. Yeah. Same yeah. thing with, with a young man. If he, if he, you know, gets a young lady pregnant, mm-hmm. you know, you're going to be just like your daddy. He was never there for the child, this, that, that, and the other, and you putting all that on them instead of having a teachable moment, teaching them responsibility, showing them the consequences that go along with that and how hard life may be. They mm-hmm. learn from that, so then when their children come along, it gets a little bit better mm. or a lot better. Mm-hmm. But you have to tackle that thing at the root. Yeah. And with that, parents, I'm just going to let you know at this. You can't start raising your kids when they're teenagers. Come on. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I had a horse that my mom uh, bought me um, when I was in uh, middle school. And uh, my uncle had previously had the horse and he had never really did anything with it. And uh, I went out and just jumped on it one day. Mm-hmm. And everybody looked at me and told me to get off the horse because the horse was going to kill me. I mean, the horse never did anything. So I went and got a saddle, put on the horse's back. No bridle, no halter, just jumped up there. She didn't do nothing. Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking, like, ain't nothing wrong with her. And then I put the bridle in her mouth. 
And that was all a different story. I learned how to ride a bucking horse real quick. I hit the <laughs> dirt uh, many times. I got scars on my face to prove where I've hit the barbed wire fences. And the thing about it is you can do everything you can to ride that horse. Mm-hmm. But the thing that really controls them is that tongue. Mm, come on. Yeah, they don't like the weight on their back. They don't like the saddle being tightened up underneath them. But when you start pulling around on that bridle, or if you've got a hack mower, for those of you that know what that is, and it cuts off that air supply when you try to turn them in one direction or another, that's when you better be ready to ride. Mm. And so why do I say that with children? You can't just let your children sit out in the pasture and then want to ride them when you want to. Come on, Give them some convenient. attention when it's convenient mm-hmm. for you. When you want them to act right, then you want to try to put the heart, the bridle in their mouth to make them pull right. By that time, they've already got set in. Yes. Mm-hmm. So you have to start raising a child when they are a child mm-hmm. so that when they become old, they don't depart from it. Yes, the word. You can't just, you know, sit back and... Do with them what you want to do with them. Mm-hmm. You just live in a corner. Then when it comes time for you to graduate, oh, yeah, we did all this to make you get to this point. It's all the parents. Now go off to college and do great things. And don't forget to mention us. Mm-hmm. And so with that, you know, the, the question of the week, why are parents so quick to blame the child for acting out versus recognizing that they may be the root of the problem? I'm, I'm going to give parents some leeway here. Okay. Sometimes they can't recognize it because they never dealt with their own problems themselves. Come on, somebody. They never I dealt with it themselves. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's like the blind leading the blind. Exactly. So somewhere down the line, there's going to have to be some interventions that are given in there so that someone gets straight. How do you change the narrative? You got to change the narrative. That's mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. And so the, the one of the things I wanted to do here is that if you realize, or you can recognize that maybe your child is acting out, um, these are some things that I kind of put together that may be able to help you. Number one, you know, mm-hmm. you can always pray. Yes. Always pray. But we know uh, with your prayers, there's going to have to be some action that comes behind that. Mm-hmm. One of the things that I would definitely tell you not to do, do not fight fire with fire. Amen. You can't Amen. throw gas on a, on a gas fire and think it's going to put it out. Mm-hmm. All right. Don't mm-hmm. fight fire with fire. In other words, don't just retaliate and rebel and argue and fuss and fight with your children. Sometimes you have to take a softer side to find out what's going on. Mm-hmm. So with that, you've got to be able to give them a voice to talk and express themselves. And you have to listen. Yes. yes. Zip that mouth for a minute. Listen to what they're saying. See what they're seeing and feeling from their standpoint. Put yourself in those shoes as to imagine what that can be like. Show that empathy and that sympathy. Mm. And then once you get all that together, then maybe you've got everything you need to know of how to help move that child forward. Yes. And so a part of listening, you have to respond at some time, but you got to choose your words. Mm. We always tell our kids, no, don't be sitting there sulking and and shivering at the lip. Use your words. Parents, I'm going to need you to use your words too. Come on. And it needs to be some nice, pleasant words. There's nothing wrong with being stern, but all that negative pushes them farther away. That's true. Yeah. So you learn how to use your words. The other thing is give support. Come on. Kids need that support. If, you know, kids aren't like animals where they you take them for a while, then you wean them off of their mother, then they get sent somewhere else. They need to have that physical and emotional support throughout their lifespan mm-hmm. from their parents. Mm-hmm. You have to give them that support that they need because if you don't give it to them, they'll go to someone else and that may not be the support that they need. That's true. The other thing is try not to get frustrated. Mm. Try to stay calm. It's hard. Believe me, we know it's hard. But sometimes your frustration ends up being anger. That's true. Your frustration turns out resentment. Mm -hmm. Your frustration where it should be producing love may produce hate. Yeah. And so if you're frustrated, and you're the adult, how do you think the child feels? Mm. They're probably equally, if not more frustrated because they want to be right in mom and dad's sight. Yes, that's true. And then the last couple of things here is this. Parents, I think I think my wife may have hit on this a little earlier. Uh, when it comes to these situations, it's not about you. Amen. I, I don't care what you know, mom and daddy and other individuals may have said or done. Yes, you may be able to get your own help, but at this time, you need to focus on that child. Yes. If it needs to be family therapy that needs to be there, then once again, Seek counseling or family therapy mm-hmm. to deal with those situations. And then the last thing I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, say, and I'm gonna pass this back off to my wife. Parents, raise your children. Don't let your children raise you. Amen. Amen. All too often, because we think that uh, our children are able to kind of fend for themselves and do certain things on their own, we just kind of let them do what they want to do. 
And then whenever we need them to do something for us, that's when we go to them. Mm. No, it's supposed to be the other way around. We raise children. That's true. So then in turn, they can turn around and raise their children. Mm -hmm. My mom used to tell me all the time, and I never understood it back then, why she was so hard on me. She was like, well, this is why I don't let you go to parties and this, that, and other, because you're not bringing no kids back here for me to raise because I raised you. Come on. Come on. If you have kids, you go have to raise them yourself. Now, that wasn't to say I couldn't uh, bring my kids home, let them visit. She could take care of them for a while, you know, to, you know, stay with grandma. She'd take them fishing and things of that nature. She said, no, you're not bringing no babies here to drop them off to me. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to teach you how I raised you, and then you go in turn have to raise your children. That's true. That is true. <laughs> and it's something. I'm so happy your mama said that because my mama said the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> but this is the, the the last question that I have for parents in regards to um, why it is that children, you know, may be acting out. What products are you introducing to the world mm. when it comes to your children? What product are you introducing to the world? And the reason why I say that is because just look right now at what's going on. It's yeah. very evident that the negatives, the the racism, whatever you want to say has been passed down through the generations because you see it today. Mm -hmm. And so we can't change. I don't know why we sit up here and we argue with other people because you can't change that person. They have to be willing to desire to be changed. They got to have a want to. Exactly. They have to have a want to in their spirit. But ask yourself what product. Because guess what? We, the kings, want to produce a product in our children to where when they get into the world, they will be uh, uh, citizens of good character. Mm -hmm. That we want them to be respectful. We want them to, to, to produce whatever it is. We want them to be who God has created for them to be. So quit talking about the next parent and their child and what they did and didn't do and start focusing on your own parents. Mm, that's good. I'm just saying, what product stage are they in right now? What is it that you're pouring into your children? What is it that your children may say to you about your parenting style? Have you ever sat down and asked your child when they're teenagers, they're at the age of understanding, uh, how do you think mama and daddy's doing with raising you? No, you probably didn't because you don't want to know the truth. You don't want to sit in that dirty, stinky diaper. Mm. I'm just asking. That's a good one. And, you know, it's kind of funny how my wife was talking about, you know, that product. You know, what product are you uh, producing and putting out there in the world? Um, you know, I just say it like this. Uh, do you want your children returned to you? You know, when a company produces a product, um, they tell you all the this good stuff thing. about it. Yeah. They, they tell you all the good stuff about it. Mm -hmm. uh, but then, you know, if something doesn't work, you know, sometimes, you know, you have to bring that product back to get a return. Mm -mm -mm. And so is the product that you're that you are producing going to be returned to you? Wow. What way is it going to be returned to you? Mm -hmm. You know, in a lot of different countries in the world, you know, when children are raised by their parents, they're raised um, with the understanding that you're going to be someone's wife. You're going to be someone's husband. Mm -hmm. And then from that time, um, things are put in place. You learn certain things at certain stages. And by the time uh, you're 15, 16, 18, 20, whatever, your wife may have already been picked for you and y'all just fall in and make it work. Mm -hmm. That's true. And, and that's just some countries. It's not done that way here in the United States, but in a sense it is. Yeah. Because you're preparing that child, that young man and young lady for whatever young man and the young lady that they may end up being in a relationship with later on down the line. Mm -hmm. And so I would want my children to turn out to be a good product, not just for the simple sake that I want to say I raised my children right because we all think that way, but I want my children to treat somebody else right. Yes, and I'll true. be the first to say it, that in my time as being a father, I have not always gotten it right. I've not always made the best decisions. There's things that I'm not proud of, but it was a learning and a growth experience. And if my children can learn from that, then I've done my part. Yeah, I will give them that that teachable moment. That's right. true. That's true. So moving on to our thought of the week. Thought of the week reads, your children will become who you are. So who do you want them to be? And that was from an anonymous source. Once again, your children will become who you are. So who do you want them to be? And once again, that comes from an anonymous source. Yes. And so... That concludes our show this week of Marriage Mondays with the Kings. We want to let you know that it's brought to you by our sponsors, the Christian Humor Force slash Inspiration, which is a group that's designed to uplift, inspire, and bring humor 
to everyday life in a Christian way. If you want to know more about them, just simply search them on Facebook at Christian Humor forward slash symbol inspiration. And so we just want to let you know that Marriage Mondays with the Kings is about to take a two week break. You know that usually we don't come on during the holidays. And so we got, you know, the holiday that's coming up, but we're going to take a two week break because we want to focus on some things and kind of change it a little bit in the next upcoming week. So we will be back with you all on Monday, July the 20th. But if you have any marriage um, questions or topics during this time that you would like to be discussed or questions, reach out to us on our Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, which is Marriage Mondays with the Kings. Our Twitter handle is at K-E-N-Y-A-N-S-H-A-N. Feel free to follow us as well. Um, and then we have our email address, which is marriage Mondays at mykrgn.com. Don't forget about our podcast. So just, we want to say thank you so much for joining us. We will be back with you all on Monday, July the 20th for another amazing show. So keep it locked right here on KRGN 98.5 FM, The, the Rock. Rock.